Hi, my name is Christian. I am from Sycor's Business Value and Strategy Department, where I am a senior digital strategist. I have a presentation for you now, uh, where we start out looking at what's happening to cookies, looking at personalization, and then why do you need a CDP? And um, the reason why this was interesting to me uh, was, of course, that personalization is near and dear to my heart. And I was seeing that cookies are disappearing. Now, companies that deliver superior customer experience, bringing in a higher degree of revenue is not new. Uh, it is not uh, a, a new invention of the wheel. This is established knowledge. Um, one of the big problems though, is that a end of companies that believe they deliver a super experience while only 8% of their customers agree. Now, <clears throat> so while brands think that they are delivering on the personalization, on the experiences that they're creating for their customers, uh, it does seem that customers do not have the same conviction. Now, Chip, and Dan Heath uh, explained what psychologists now call the peak end rule uh, in their book, The Power of Moments. And essentially uh, what it says is that people assess experiences by tending to forget or ignore the length. And instead they rate the experiences based on two key moments the best or worst moment known as the peak and the ending. So what we therefore need to focus on, of course, is to create or architecting extraordinary and memorable peak moments and making sure that we end the interaction with our customers uh, in a good way. Now, this should be, uh, done by having third-party cookies um, and then creating personalization. Um, but third-party cookies and, and data sharing, which have been the backbone of digital advertising, uh, are going away. We've all seen them in action, of course. Uh, you search for a pair of sneakers, suddenly sneaker ads are following us from site to site or something similar. And this type of retargeting have been increasingly off-putting to users and dredging up questions of who exactly has access to this personal data and how is it being used. It's a dynamic that casts third-party cookies in a less than flattering light, seen at best as a murky approach to data collection and at worst, an invasion of privacy. Now, in, in 2017, Apple implemented for its browser Safari an update that automatically blocked third-party cookies and limited the lifespan of first-party cookies. So they are now set to expire after seven days. And Mozilla um, followed suit in 2019 with Firefox, which now also blocks third-party cookies by default. And then in... Following this trend, Apple also have now uh, announced that users now explicitly have to grant app developers the permission to share their phone's unique identifier for tracking and advertising purposes, uh, which means you can see here where uh, you need to specifically grant access when app want to cr uh, apps want to track you across apps or websites. Now, Google is, of course, also following suit. Uh, they are facing out third-party cookies by 2022, um, as are all of the major browsers, um, in various different tempi, of course. Um, but what does this tell us? Uh, it tells us that there is a definite shift away from using third-party data, uh, which then, of course, coupled with users having a high expectation of good experiences and you wanting to create good experiences for customers. 
that you need to then look at, well, what, how else can we use the data? And that brings up the next part of this, which is looking at a, a CDP. Now, a digital marketing platform is something that we've worked with in Cycle for a long time. And this customer data platform was slightly different uh, in that they're easily confused. So digital marketing platforms were designed to serve advertisements and enable retargeting using cookies. Uh, they focus more on anonymous segments, categories, and so on than single users. So in a DMP, much of the info is anonymous and typically expires after 90 days, which was a standard cookie lifetime. Now, a CDP creates a persistent customer profile. So that means that it stores the data and keeps the history. And then by combining it with all of the data about your customers, it comes out with a single record. So DMPs are designed to target, and especially retarget, anonymous users uh, for advertising. Sometimes, of course, also with PII data, um, personal identifiable information. But a CDP creates a database of identified customers to use for more than only just advertising. So DMPs use third-party cookies created by an external domain, a domain on all the websites in its service. And why, when a user visits a website in the network, a cookie is loaded and that tracks behavior across sites. But what happens when the third-party cookies are blocked? Well, so this type of user-specific cross-site tracking will of course stop. And while users can theoretically opt in to allow third-party cookies on their browser, we do not see that as a viable option. And this means that DMPs will have the only access to previously collected user data. Audiences will not be updated and new users will not be tracked. Whereas CDPs, on the other hand, collect and organize first-party data that customers share directly with a brand to create a holistic consented view of their customers. So a CDP can take your data and share it with other tools within the company's tech stack to deliver customer first experiences. And that means, of course, anything that you collect specifically on users, such as uh, the individual insights gained from their uh, your, what you track on your own app or your own website with a high degree of accuracy. Now, this leads me to um, perhaps the main part of this, which is what are the five reasons that a CDP is no longer a nice to have? And the first one is, of course, easy. That's where I began with this. Um, I started looking at cookies and how they are disappearing. So I'm not going to go in more into that. But uh, the next point I want to um, bring up is uh, the online activity. So with more online activity, replacing traditional in-store and face-to-face -face experiences, and this is of course only highlighted and accelerated by COVID-19, but it was a trend that was already in place before that. Um, but with things happening um, very quickly, brands or uh, companies will need to be able to collect and unify and activate data, preferably in real time. With so much changing quickly, being able to communicate to the right customers very quickly requires a customer data platform that works in real time. My next point um, is around uh, data privacy regulations. Um, as more privacy regulations come online, creating regional requirements, and that are somewhat close to each other, but of course have uh, differences. But it does say something about, you should have the ability to probably segment and control permissions for data throughout the customer life cycle. GDPR, CCPA, LGPD, POPI, or whatever the naming of um, data privacy regulations are, um, they are not going away and being able to react and make sure that you are compliant uh, will only become 
more uh, prevalent uh, going forward. My fourth point um, is around personalization. So consumers today, more than ever, demand experiences that are personalized to them. And what we're seeing uh, is that some marketers are souring on this personalization. Uh, recently, Gardner have released a report which found that 80% of marketers will abandon personalization efforts by 2025. And why is that? It's been very well established that users today definitely expect to see personalized content. Uh, they are very quick to switch to other providers. And the reasoning we see uh, is in large part that marketers are spending an extraordinary amount of time and energy and budget collecting and integrating customer data, not to mention data analysis and testing and experimentation, figuring out what to personalize and then creating the content. So it is not a trivial task to accomplish. Although modern consumers have a very high expectation to the content that they're, they're being presented. So essentially, personalization of content is the expectation of visitors coming to your websites, but it is not a trivial task to accomplish. Part of the answer to that have um, been that we need to then move into machine learning. We need to accept that we can trust machines to create the right um, personalization. Now, there is a problem with this. And by problem, I mean that today's machine learning projects, according to uh, recent research from Dimensional Research, um, is that most of these projects that have engaged in machine learning are actually reporting them as stalled as many of as 80 percent of companies that have engaged in machine learning projects are reporting them as being stalled while 90 per six 96 percent of the projects have run into problems with data quality data labeling uh, that you need uh, to train an AI or uh, building a model confidence. So companies that are developing their own machine learning algorithms are finding that they can't get clean data into models and they cannot trust the results coming out of them. And this just further emphasizes the need to make both simple and more complex AI-driven decisioning models available to marketers in an easy to use way. And of course, what we propose is, uh, is a smart hub CDP that, that um, allows you to be able to leverage your first party data. That will allow marketers to build complex decision models more easily and then bring value uh, to your business. Now, a smart up CDP um, like we have um, in Sitecore is that you take a stream of interactive uh, data um, somehow, whether it's um, supplied as a stream, whether it's uh, interactive or whether it's a batch job where you import it. Um, but essentially what we want to do is uh, we want to uh, take data and then make a, an informed decision based on rules or based on a machine learning model. Um, and then from that, being able to, uh, to test and send out whatever content have been deemed as the most appropriate or the next best action uh, in the different channels that you are uh, working with. Now, of course, um, throughout everything that we, uh, we we do recommend being able to um, experiment, meaning uh, doing A-B testing and so on, so that you can make sure that the content that you're producing, that you are um, personalizing for specific segments um, is also the, uh, the most relevant and are actually performing the best. 
of course, uh, to finish off with, um, for digital advertisers, the status quo uh, has been to track site and app users by allowing networks and ad tech companies to place third-party cookies on their properties, essentially giving up control over their own data. The th the ban on third-party cookies means that most advertisers will have to rework entire strategies, but maybe it's about time. So the whole programmatic ad supply chain has been notoriously fragmented and non-transparent. Um, and data from campaigns can be opaque, and um, the investment in programmatic ads might actually never reach. Um, so fifth, uh, there is a... UK study that found that 15% of ad spend seems to just fall through uh, the cracks and never actually be attributed to any users or any players. So there's a lack of uniformity in how uh, different platforms format data, which then creates inconsistencies and makes it difficult for advertisers to properly analyze performance. A customer data platform has the potential to create a single customer view. But the real value of that is making it actionable and gaining the insights to do so. Think of the questions that can be answered by CDPs. Like, what was the product that this customer bought before their current purchase? Which segments or target groups does this customer belong to? Is this customer likely to churn? Has she shown any interest lately? What is their purchase intent and timing? What was the value and predicted future value of the customer? Where do they prefer to interact? Um, what are their preferences? Where are they in the customer journey? All of those would just be examples. And it might seem that this is all about analytics, but it is essentially more about easily deciding on the right segments, the user journeys, the messaging channels and timings, while validating your hypotheses and doing AP tests, et cetera. So once you combine the underlying data and insights, they can lead you to even more remarkable and valuable moments for your customers. And with that, I'm going to say thank you for listening. I hope you have a great symposium.